Welcome to the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa, where we discuss dating and other significant relationships. Great evening. Awesome. Hola, papi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am doing great. It has been a very productive day. You know, nothing uh, gives me a boost of energy, like feeling like I got shit done. So, <laughs> You know what? That is an amazing feeling. And we're speaking of getting shit done. We're about to get shit done tonight. Oh, let's tell the people. What are we doing? Jump into it. We are going to be talking about friends with benefits. I want to see where you stand on this and where the people stand on this. Okay. Um, you know, I will jump right in and say that I have been a friend with benefits. Um, and I thought at one point in time that I was not fit for a relationship, quite honestly. Um you know, kind of a transition period in your life you go through when, you know, big relationships don't work out and you just start feeling like there's nobody else out there. Uh, or I just wasn't in a headspace to put myself out there for real. And so um, I'm not against it, but I do think psychologically you have to know what you're doing. You have to have, um, somebody who is a safe partner physically and you know emotionally mentally um and you have to be honest because people catch feelings all of a sudden you know um and so it's very difficult um sometimes to just know how to navigate friends with benefits and you know i think sometimes we think it's always um like sex is always involved but I have had friends that they were my, um, they were just that masculine energy that I needed in my life. Um, made me feel good as a woman just to, um, you know, be around them. I knew we could hang out, go get something to eat, you know, just just be easy and chill and there not be the pressure of looking for um anything you know what i'm saying i um so i mean obviously being single and divorced um over the years i do think that it can be a very useful um dynamic Mm -hmm. however men and women um you definitely have to be very self-aware and it's important to have genuine, frank, raw, honest conversations before that starts. And sometimes even as it has begun to establish those boundaries when you see that they need to be redrawn or adjusted. Mm -hmm. Um, So for example, you know, with, with female friends that I've had in the past, I always tell them, look, Um, my favorite analogy with this is think of it like when you grocery shop hungry, you ever go to the grocery (laughs) store and you shop hungry, you go in there, you buy all kinds of thousand dollars worth of groceries. (laughs) You start buying stuff. You have no business buying because you're hungry, Mm -hmm. buying your eyes and your stomach. So you're buying cookies and graham crackers and meats and chicken. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I compare that to dating and not having a steady person to fulfill your physical needs and even emotional needs to an extent. Mm-hmm. Uh and then you put yourself out there and then you're on a bad date and you sleep with someone who you probably shouldn't have been sleeping with in the first place or who you probably shouldn't have been given that kind of intimacy and time. Mhm. And if you have somebody that you said that you trust, right, or friends with benefits that you trust, you could have easily said, you know what, this guy is not for me. This guy is toxic. This guy is just not, you know, something about this guy. I just can't get behind. So let me cut this short and I'm going to call Tom or, you know, Bob or whatever, whatever. Yeah, whoever's in your pocket, right? (laughs) Whoever you got in your back pocket, exactly. And tell them, hey, come over. I, I, you know, I need, I need some adult time. 
Right. And I I feel, and now I don't have anything of substance to point to this, but I feel that when women or people date and they don't have a consistent, steady partner, that that can uh, have consequences when you're out there dating recklessly. Yes. And, and I think there's something to be said about, um, you know, we call it friends with benefits, but I think, you know, maybe back in the day, it was companionship, like someone who, um, you know, you can, you can be easy and good together because you know, you aren't looking for it to go so far into commitment and, you know, the, the grind that makes relationships sometimes go into drudgery, quite honestly. You know, the bill payment, picking up kids, um, washing dishes, doing laundry. You know, when, when life starts to become sort of a, a rote sort of thing. But without those chores, that person is sort of, uh, you know, someone who knows you well enough that, you can have good conversation. You can have, um, you can have good physical contact. You know, sometimes you just need a kiss. Like I have been in a lonely place where I just missed the feel of a man's arms around me. And I don't know if other people can identify with that, but when you decide you're going to be single and not really pursue relationships, um, you know, for whatever reason, if it's you're going through your healing journey or you're getting counseling or you're just tired, you're broke, whatever. Um, it just feels like sometimes I would miss just a, the energy a man has. Like for me, the opposite sex just has a certain energy that being with your friends, you know, all, you know, same sex friends or whatever, just doesn't have that same vibe it's just different Absolutely. Um, not, not yeah. better or worse just different and I think it's something that all humans need we all need contact we all need um, the, the power of touch and we saw with COVID how many people I think really died of loneliness not just mm. you know of a disease but the disease of loneliness being isolated and not touched and not talked to and so I, I think whatever age you are, too, like I think sometimes people think of it as a young person's situation with friends with benefits. But I think older people uh, just tag it companionship. But I think it's a it's a human need. It is. I mean, absolutely is. I mean, that's pretty proven. And, you know, um, people who are experts would would agree to that. I, me personally, I'm a big believer in, you know, having somebody that you can trust, um, that, you know, when you have that desire or when you're craving that feminine energy or that masculine energy, mm -hmm. um, or both, right. Depending on, you know, which side of the aisle you like to play on. Um, I think it's important to at least consider that, but that requires you being honest with yourself it requires being in touch and being <laughs> self-aware because like you said, things can get messy and, and sloppy when feelings start to get attached. So it's very important that whenever somebody does go into one of these dynamics, you're not going into it with the intent of trying to persuade or trying to change someone to be yours because there is a reason that you are only being considered as a booty call or, you know, friends with benefits. So it's important to highlight that um, you need to be self-aware and intuitive as it relates to that and honest <laughs> that, hey, this man is 20 years younger than me. So realistically, we don't have a future together. Right. <laughs> Uh, and like you, know. you said too whether it's a booty call or even more than that like I think that needs to be clearly defined because to you know to one person it may be like we're each other's fallback when we're in between relationships and for the other person it may very well be that they truly see you as a friend 
and sometimes it moves into other territory additional territory so i think again making it clear and sometimes people don't want to have those conversations i found i found that i have been much more frank and upfront about what i want in a relationship um you know even as i've moved into the the current relationship i'm in i am much more outspoken about what i need what i want what I would like to see happen because I've learned from my past experiences. I just kind of um, went along with, you know, let's just chill and see what happens or let's just go with the flow or, you know, the situation ship language, like we talked about on that show. And that's kind of what you end up with a, a bunch of vague, not sure where we stand. And then if the other person gets, um, like offended because you want to make it clear then you know where you stand right there i yes. think you know you don't want to be honest with me about what we're doing then we're not meant to do anything together <laughs> at least yeah. in my book no agreed i mean definitely and you know to the ladies to the gentlemen out there who either are starting uh something similar like this or uh, maybe considering it, right? Maybe you're mm -hmm. recently single and you want to, you know, meet new people and maybe consider, you know, getting uh, friends with benefits. Um, it's important, right, that you understand where you are in your dating journey and in the, your personal journey. And also it's important to, um, you know, identify your boundaries. Right. Um you know, some women have small children. So maybe one of the boundaries may be that, hey, you can't come over when I have my kids here. Yes. You know, that would be a prime example, right? Because you don't want to have those awkward conversations where, hey, who's that random guy that shows up every Friday mm -hmm. night at 12 a.m.? <laughs> right. Not, not cool. Um, and no judgment, but not cool. Um, and I think, too, like, you know, if if you're seeing multiple people, you know, being up front about like, do we speak when we see each other out and we're both with someone else? You know, is it a casual hi? Do we act like friends? Do we just not acknowledge each other publicly? You know, I think those are nuances that sometimes we don't think about until we find ourselves in the position and then the other person's looking at us awkwardly while we're going in for a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like totally messing up the play that's on the table, but we need to know what part we play, how to act it, and you know, just what the rules of engagement are. And I think if you're an adult and you're old enough to get into a relationship like that, you ought to be adult enough to be able to speak your truth. Oh, absolutely. So, um, obviously we've established, you know, being self-aware, um, setting up those healthy boundaries, whatever they may be. It could mm -hmm. be, you know, you may have a, a laundry list of them or you may only have one or two. Um, I, I've, I've had friends with benefits before where they're like, if I'm going to sleep with you, I don't want you sleeping with anybody else, even if it is casual. Mm -hmm. And that was a conversation that we needed to have. And that would be one you know, boundary, right? That right. You know, potentially could be a deal breaker for some people, right? Because right. then that at that point, that, or ownership, you know, that is. Yeah. And, and also, right. If you're still trying to actively date, that could also get tricky and hairy. Yeah. Really. <laughs> because what if you go on a date with somebody and it goes really well and you're not going to be like, oh wait I told my fuck buddy I couldn't sleep with other people no. you know? <laughs> so. listen I think that's still a different level though puppy you know uh, just being an FB with somebody I think still has a different connotation than friends I think the word friends to me is what the game changer is because I think you really have genuine care and concern for the other person over you know just a physical connection and there's nothing else to it you know I guess for me that's the way I define it like there is genuine friendship uh what's what's the uh 
<laughs> I think it was Julia Roberts or somebody who was in the movie where she and her best friend decided like if they were 40 and still, you know, didn't have anybody, they were going to agree to marry each other or whatever. <laughs> so I, I feel like with friends with benefits, it has that sort of feeling to it, but not with marriage, just the, the exchange of we're going to share parts of our lives together, whether that be emotional, physical, whatever, maybe just dinner together or doing chores sometimes together, or I can call you to help move my stuff. You know, <laughs> the benefits I just think look like more than just, I think we've simplified life so much to the point where it's like sex or no sex. But to me, there's so many shades of gray in that. Like, you know, there really are friends that they need somebody to cook for them. I had a friend and, and it's funny because you know, this was a female friend, but she didn't like to cook because she was like, I don't want to have to cook all of that for myself. I'm tired after work. I just don't want to do that. And I know, you know, on the show, we're talking about dating and everything, but I'm just saying, this is why I feel like the friends part is so important, but I would meal prep for her. Now we have anything, you know, there was nothing sexual or anything. We we're just friends, platonic and that kind of thing. But I would meal prep for her. And in return, at that time, I needed a part-time job, so she would pay me. We were friends with benefits. Now, on a on a companionship level, where you're talking about, you know, talking to a friend in a way that takes it beyond platonic, then again, like I say, you know, to me, the boundary is what you all set, and the relationship is what you consider it to be, what you decide it's going to look like. You know, okay. I've had friends who have had friends with benefits, but the other person is sort of like when they need to go out and they need a man on their arm or, you know, he needed a woman on his arm. That's what they would do. But there was no, there was nothing else. It was just, you're my person when I go out so that I don't have to show up by myself when everybody else is coupled up. It's almost like, uh, almost like a diet situation ship. Like situationship light. Um, light, right? <laughs> we just coined sure, a term right? here, everybody. Situationship so light. I, um, you know, as I did, a, I did a little homework, obviously, um, for this topic. And Psychology Today is one of dot com is one of my favorite websites that I <laughs> visit regularly because um, I have an affinity for psychology. Uh -huh. And they did an article talking about the pros and cons of being friends with benefits right. and they broke it down into categories as far as the casual dynamics. Um, so you have your one night stands, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, full uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. um, not really my speed, not saying I haven't done it, but I, I don't go out with the intention of, hey, I'm looking for a one night stand. It just right. kind of happened, but definitely, right. but definitely not something that I aim for or strive for. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is booty calls. Mm -hmm. um, so booty calls is basically, that is almost friends with benefits, but without the friendship dynamic. It's strictly sexual uh you know gear oriented basically uh or fuck buddies right same mm -hmm. same concept where it would be considered strictly for sex they don't really hang out the person comes they might have a drink or they might smoke something they do their thing and then they go on about their business right um, and then, of course, the topic that we're covering today, which would be friends with benefits, where there are there is an actual friendship that is acknowledged and there are activities that partake that are more than just sex. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is more my speed um, because I tell women all the time, I like women with depth. So if I can't enjoy a cup of coffee or a meal with you, um, then that to me is, is going to make it hard for me to want to see or be around you all the time. Uh, so even if it's on a casual surface level, friends with benefits ordeal, I still have to feel that kind of good energy, that good 
um, you know, synergy where we can enjoy each other's company, even if we're not naked and having sex. Right. And, you know, I guess it's sort of like you need to really know yourself and where you are. And I think that's where sometimes a lot of the, the, uh, the shady stuff happens because <laughs> you know, if you don't really know what you're looking for, you just kind of have fallen into the habit of being with someone just because, you know, it feels better than being lonely or, um, you know what I'm saying? Like there's that murky place where sometimes we just do something to have something to do. And I think that's where feelings can develop and attachments can happen that are not what everybody signed up for. And then when you get rejected, it throws you into that spiral of nobody wants me or here I go again. I'm starting all over. But I think it's just really about being aware, self-aware and communicating clearly i'm gonna tell you the truth i was reading um i'm, I'm reading about three books right now because i like to just give myself a challenge but one of the books is codependent no more and mm, okay. that book has been very powerful so everybody if you have not ever read that book it's an oldie but goodie it was written probably like 80 something and um the woman was a counselor for people but she herself had been uh chemical dependent and had been a codependent of someone who was chemical dependent. You know, it started out with like Alcoholics Anonymous, but uh, the term kind of came out of that culture. But when I was reading it, Poppy, I realized how much I had been a codependent in so many relationships. And that's one of the things where I say, like, really knowing what you're doing, being able to trust the person you're with, and really being able to to keep your word or either update your agreement. Because if you're a codependent and you're out of a relationship with somebody that you've, you know, been addicted to helping, because that's basically what it is, an addiction to helping others to the point where you will hurt yourself. Um, you will allow yourself to go with needs unmet because you have put so much time and energy into caretaking others. And so I think we can sometimes slide into, um, new relationships or even friends with benefits out of that codependent need to care for somebody else. We're agreeing to something that even though, you know, you know, you've got feelings for that person and they don't share those feelings for you the same way, you're still going to put yourself out there to show up for them, to answer that phone for that midnight call, to cook, to show up at every event and still not be called girlfriend or boyfriend or man or woman or whatever your thing is. So um, that book really shed a lot of light on like where I felt needy. And, you know, it really made me do some, some real strong self-reflection. <laughs> Listen, I'm always, um, you know, an advocate of self-improvement uh, and using, you know, different resources mm -hmm. to learn and to expand your knowledge and to, uh, you know, help you self-reflect. Uh, so I'm all for that. Um, and that's awesome that you're doing that. And that's why I like to visit this website, because they do a lot of psychology pieces that, you know, are fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's look at some of our, um, you know, I love it when we do our uh, listener responses on Facebook and our girl Danielle came right on through at the top of the list um, and in her comments uh, Danielle Hummel says the approach is to always be honest with one another it can work but you have to communicate it's important to set rules and boundaries right away it won't work if one thinks by doing it this way will make a person change their mind and all of a sudden want a relationship don't fill your basket yet and keep pursuing other dates, um, you know, non-sexual, if you're looking for something serious, I would say that if feelings start to, be, uh, to come, then um, you see then if y'all want to become a couple. If either of you think they found a mate for real, then have one last hurrah and be done. <laughs> road, Danielle says. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so funny. 
funny. But I did agree with, um, you know, her summation there, though, about, you know, honesty, communication, the rules and boundaries. You know, we've just talked about all of that. Um, then um, Megan uh, Duarte, I hope I'm saying that right, Megan or uh, Duarte. I'm sorry. Duarte. I, Duarte. Duarte. Yeah. Okay. Really, it's the same rules for any relationship. Be forthcoming and entirely honest with each other. Um, I did like your response to her, though, um, Poppy. You said there's a uh, there's a lot more gray areas and pitfalls than in your standard typical relationship, in my view. Uh, just because you know it's not really a traditional relationship, it's a really an alternative relationship. If you think it about is, it. it's I mean, it's literally a very matter of fact relationship where hey i find you sexually appealing and attractive you find me sexually appealing and attractive the other stuff either it doesn't line up or it doesn't make sense yeah but i still want to give you some of my time so yeah i i kind of uh push back on that because i feel that in most relationships healthy relationships mm -hmm. you have a pretty clear path as to what you expect from your partner and what my partner expects from me. Yeah. Yeah. If you are in a relationship, yeah. You understand that, hey, you are to no longer be pursuing other women or other men, and you are not to be entertaining and you are to conduct yourself accordingly. When you right. are friends with benefits, yeah, it's a little this is just the person that fulfills your physical desires. Yet, you can still be out in the dating world looking for your ideal partner and still have your friends with benefits on the side while you go on this, you know, dating journey. Because obviously, yeah. you know, dating can, you know, you can be out there a while and not find anything. Um, okay. and you're still going to have those needs. So you, you know, you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to be dating hungry because then you might mess around and eat stuff that you, sh that you shouldn't have been eating. <laughs> now, look, what a great way to put that, Bobby, but I will have some people who would disagree with that. Like when I would say to some people, um, that I was not ready to date exclusively and, um, you know, it would be some pushback. Like, well, I'm not competing for your time, mm. you know, be the response or, um, you know, how are you going to, it's like people say there's some split energy, um, you know, how are you going to know what we can be if you got all this energy, you know, seeing all these other people or talking to all these other people. And in my mind, I always felt like, well, that's just like going out and buying the first car you see like you know nobody does that nobody goes and buys the first house they go look at um you know you need to compare and see like what's the best lineup for you what's the best alignment what's the best matchup and so when i would hear that from people it just immediately i went along with it um a few times but always to my detriment to be honest with you the ones that were like very demanding about being exclusive um it didn't last and um i was just like it's almost like well i might be a great catch for you but how do i know you're a great catch for me mm, yeah. I mean, you know what i'm saying right so um you know i will say you know there's some people probably out here listening and thinking this is terrible. This is awful. We're not giving dating advice. We're just talking about things that are happening in the dating world. So don't get you, you know, don't get yourself all caught up in a tight knot. But, you know, the reality is there's some people that, you know, uh, just need a friend during, like you said, this journey of dating, because it is really uh, sometimes difficult to navigate all the ins and outs and the different types of relationships. Because, you know, you're talking about some people saying, well, we're going to date and be serious. Well, not if you're in a poly relationship. You're going to date and be serious. But you're also open to other people in an ethically non-monogamous relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. You know, there's so many uh, variations <clears throat> of um, ice cream. You know, so... Still in a rocky road. <laughs> and, you know, um, so... 
It's interesting. So I have a story. I recently reconnected with an old friend. Um, we had been friends for about 13 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. This, wait, wait, wait. We have to clarify for the story for the listeners. This was just a friend. You say she's just a friend. Yeah, yeah. We were we we okay. have been platonic friends for 13 years. Okay. Okay, thank you. I we had never even like the most we had done is hugged. That's it. Mm-hmm. And somehow we ended up crossing the line mm-hmm. and we got intimate and now we, you know, have shifted our friendship. What? Poppy, have you gotten into a relationship? Is this no. breaking news? No, not, not a relationship. <laughs> it turned into a friends with, with benefit situation. And okay. it's funny because when we had these frank conversations, um, she was like, yeah, I always found you attractive. But, you know, we were such good friends that I did not want to put that at risk. Mm-hmm. And I told her basically the same thing that, yeah, like, you know, I've always appreciated you being my friend. So I always, you know, kept it platonic because, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want to ruin our friendship. We've had a a good friendship and, Mm -hmm. you know, she's, you know, she's given me advice on everything and anything. And we would try to help each other with dating advice as well. Okay. Uh, are you going to be like Holly Miller who said, what if your fin- uh, friends with benefits turn into a <laughs> relationship and now y'all oh. share a kiddo years later? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you know, we're good friends and we're definitely good lovers, but we can't, um, you know, go into a relationship because of the children aspect of things, which is, has mm-hmm. always been my bugaboo. Uh, she's <laughs> got like, you know, she's got grown kids and she's done with that life. Right. But my point in this was, is that literally we had to have these conversations before we even took things to the bedroom. Absolutely. Because <laughs> we, we valued our friendship that much that, Hey, you know, I'm okay to handle this, but I don't want to do it if it's going to put our friendship at jeopardy or risk. Right. Now, I've heard a lot of relationship experts um, say this, like men can handle that way better than women. And I like to say, I beg to differ. I really think it's about your emotional capacity and where you are. Um, I don't really think it's a gender thing, quite honestly, because I think men would be very surprised at women and what we have been capable of if you really knew who we were. And I'm not just saying like devious type stuff, but like we handle uh, crises in our families. We go to work. We we do a lot of things. And I think men like to look at us like we're just kind of frail and we couldn't handle that. And so Either they don't ask for what they really want because they don't think the woman will handle it or she will agree to it. But I think, um, again, honest communication will really take you so much further in the dating world or in relationships than just trying to be manipulative or devious or, you know, backdoor and everything. Like, just talk to the person And whatever the level of your interest is, you know, see if you can get access granted at that level. You may, you may, but again, and I do say this, though, I have seen it where, you know, people agree, men and women actually agree to certain things and then somebody catches feelings and it's not always the woman. Yeah, agree. And listen, let's be real, you know, men, uh, it's documented that sometimes men can be territorial. And sometimes men can act irrational because of that mentality. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely not something far-fetched to to think. But that's why you got to really lay things out very clearly. And normally, the way I handle it, right, the way I've gone about my business is um, whenever I know for certain that, hey, this situation is likely going to be a friends with benefits because of X, Y, Z. And I like to lay that out. Hey, this is the reason why I don't think we can work long-term right. or short-term or for fun or for pleasure. If, if you want to pursue that, sure. I'm open to it. I can offer this. It's important to, to 
lay that out. So that way you are giving that individual the opportunity to make that decision on their own. Yes. You're not being deceptive and you're not Nothing. being misleading. And fellas, let me tell you, when you're dealing with grown women, they may not like what you have to say. They may not agree that you uh, can't commit or that you're not compatible or whatever, but they will respect that you at least kept it a buck and yeah. were up front. But with that being said, as a man, you have to be okay. As a woman, you have to be okay that, hey, this may not work out in my favor. And that's okay, too. Right. Like, but... you have to be okay with, you have to be free of consequence. And you have to be okay that, hey, this person is cool with that. Or, damn, I just pushed this person away because I told them that I can't be this or I can't offer them that. And that requires a certain level of confidence and a certain level of honesty that Maturity. is necessary because if you start to deceive and if you start to use mm -hmm. lies and manipulation to get what you want from this individual, that's where things really, really can get ugly and messy. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, no hope for friendship, for sure. Yeah, yeah you're, you're killing the friendship. And you're also killing the opportunity of some awesome pleasure. Right. And character assassination. Because she's probably going to run your name in the ground or he is going to run your name in the ground. So, <laughs> you know, however that works out, don't do and it. And normally, um, you know, when I've had uh, these dynamics, um, I always like to lay it out that, hey, look, the day you find somebody who's more compatible for you, please let me know. Right. Let me know so that way oh. I understand how to conduct myself that, hey, we're back to being regular friends again. We're not special friends anymore. That part. Um, I think um, Holly says, too, um, in her comments, you know, what, what did you think if, you know, can they develop feelings or whatever? And I asked her, I said, well, how did it turn out, you know? Um, she said, I would say, so, yes, we're still together four and a half years later with a two-year-old. Definitely unexpected, but all is great. So I was really a sucker for that happy ending. Wendy Wu was our last comment on the feed. And uh, thank you all again for, um, you know, putting in on the, the commentary when we're doing the, the uh, pre-work for the show. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments. So please keep them coming. Uh, but Wendy Wu said, it can work. I had a great FWB situation for several years. Sometimes one person may fall and the other person not. That part can be tricky. So uh, we totally agree with you on that, Wendy. But this has been a great show, um, Poppy. So, you know, remind our listeners of all the ways that they can enjoy our podcast. You can find us on Spotify. Uh, search The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. And, of course, our YouTube channel. The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Uh, we got that up and running on March 1st. And as of a couple of hours ago when I checked it, we are up to 89 subscribers and we have 35 podcasts uploaded there for your pleasure, ready to go. So please support us, subscribe, comment, and let us know what you think. And funny story. So I pitched this uh, discussion to a friend Mm -hmm. And she told me that with her fuck buddy, when she has one, what they do when the person meets somebody that they are strongly considering for something serious, they have a code word that they use. Ooh. So she says that when, when they see, uh, when somebody says raccoon, that means that the sex is off the table and we're back to being friends again. Okay. <laughs> what if you just can't say that? <laughs> I say raccoon. I just be like, where? <laughs> raccoon. So if so if a if a text message if you see a friend if you see a friend and her text message pops up raccoon. Oh my god. Just know that could be her fuck buddy telling her that she's that he or she has found the love of their life. Oh my gosh. That is so hilarious. Why the raccoon? Oh my god. I have no idea. They just picked a <laughs> random word and I just thought that was funny as hell because I was like, hey, yeah, you know, we're gonna do the podcast on this and I'm, you know, reading up on this stuff and blah blah blah. And and she told me that little story and I just thought that was 
hilarious because I've never really heard that, honestly. Wow. I'm telling you, it's I love this show because we have so much good <laughs> stuff that comes out. Like the stories are precious. I feel like I need to come up with my little unique word now, man. I'm gonna have to go find me one. No, but not not raccoon, please. Not, not I'll probably raccoon. do like hippo, I'll do hippopotamus or something. I don't know. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna turn around and just look and see that out here. But a raccoon, look, that could be out, out in your trash or out in your backyard, out here in the country. Or I'll do megalodon or something. I don't know. Something. Yeah, they're like, what is he saying? What is he mean? <laughs> That means he's in love, is what that means. He thinks he's in love anyways. <laughs> Listen, okay, Peppy Le Pew. There you go. <laughs> hey, I like that. Oh, you said you just in a gif if that's the case then. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, it's been that's great, hilarious. guys. Um, if you'd like to be a special co-host with us here on the relationship cycle with Jorge and Nelsa, uh, please hit us up at Jorge and A N D Nelsa at gmail.com and let us know what topics you may be interested in sitting in on. Uh, that's what, something that we've been talking about doing for a while now. I guess we're going to have to just put it out there on the Facebook post, Poppy, but uh, don't be afraid. We're here to hold your hand through the process. <laughs> Look, we can do some practice and everything. Hey, we're here uh, for it, but thank you all for the support yeah. and please check us out and let us know what you think. Support our YouTube channel and help us to keep growing and to uh, expand our movement. Yeah, actually, you know, share our podcast with a friend. Uh, that would be a great way to support us as well. So until next time. Buenas noches, good people. Thanks for joining us today on The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Do you have show ideas? Email us at jorgeandnelsa at gmail.com. Follow us on Spotify or anchor.fm for more great shows.